Hi, I'm Michael Varnum. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Psychology, and I'm director of the Culture and Ecology Lab. And so in our lab, we're sort of broadly interested in where variations come from across human societies, and also what causes those societies to change over time. And it turns out uh, a lot of the factors that are important for this aren't the ones that would be immediately apparent. So people think a lot about socialization practices or institutions or sort of popular myths and folk tales, these kinds of things is carrying a lot of those cultural information. And they do in a way, but in fact, a lot of those differences actually have their origins in some more basic features of our physical environment. Things like the prevalence of germs, uh, how crowded a place is, the ratio of men to women. And it turns out these are rather powerful variables in explaining why human societies differ and why they change over time. Uh, so right now, in collaboration with Doug Kenrick and a number of graduate students in social psychology, uh, we're interested in how people's motives may vary across human societies. And the idea here is that there's a set of fairly fundamental goals uh, that are important to essentially all human beings to varying degrees, right? We need to keep ourselves safe from danger. Uh, we need to avoid infectious disease. We need to find friends and allies. Uh, we need to find romantic partners with whom to make offspring, and we need to take care of those offspring. And while these are all fairly universal in terms of how that they are tasks that human beings are motivated to accomplish, the relative importance of these motives actually varies uh, quite dramatically across countries. And some of these variations are interesting because they don't map on to the sort of West versus the rest variation we see when we look at things like individualism or a number of other values or levels of happiness. And in fact, on many of these fundamental motivations, uh, for example, China and Canada may look more similar than Canada and the US, which is not necessarily what you might expect if you're familiar with the extant body of cultural, cross-cultural research. So we think this might be sort of a new lens through which to understand uh, human societal variation. And we're now interested in sort of figuring out what's causing these patterns of variation. And um, so right now we've got data from about 25 countries and we have data collection ongoing in another dozen or 14 or so and we're hoping to uh, sort of slowly fill in this map of the world or this set of maps. Some of the dimensions where we see sort of most difference from these West versus rest maps where you know typically you see North America, Western Europe, Australia, New Zealand and then everybody else uh, is when we look at things like how invested people are in caring for their family and how in interested they are in finding romantic partners. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of odd in retrospect that people who do comparisons across cultures haven't considered these as dimensions that might be, you know, interesting to study across our societies. And so we think part of why we're capturing, you know, these unexpected patterns of variations is we're sort of, we're starting with different questions than the ones people usually ask. 